I think Leandro is contributing a lot in the sense that I think he's putting, uh, I repeat it again, he's putting the right questions. Remember that this is too complex for one person to have the answer, so we need to find the answer collectively. He's managed to distill all his ideas into some beautiful kind of generic ideas which you can apply almost to any kind of business in any kind of situation. And I think that's the flexibility. Leandro's speaking style is fabulous. He's full of passion, he's full of energy, he's full of real insights, real meaningful insights that are all joined together as well, not random insights, they're actually joined together. It's uh, just absolutely brilliant. He's infectious, basically, which is clearly why his organisation is called Viral Change. I really like uh, this concept of remarkable uh, people, remarkable behaviours and uh, remarkable organisation. So I'm not going to even attempt to define, which is probably what you are expecting me to do now, could you define what a remarkable organization is, because after all that's the title of the, of the day. Well, I don't know. I'm going to give some pointers, because I think that there are some commonalities, there's going to be something in common, but that's my view. And I think that something that is remarkable may look like that. Um, first of all, what they do is excellent. But you know, that's a pass, because excellence today is a pass. You expect people to be excellent. I mean, you don't expect not to be excellent. So thank you, but they are excellent. Maybe what they do, how they do it, is smart, is different, is distinct, is bold, and stands out, something that is memorable. So it's more about the how and this package of the how and the why. Then maybe they also occupy a space in the world. And I like to use the term a space in the world instead of the brand, because it's a special space that these companies or even groups of individuals may occupy. And if that space is bigger than what they do, they do something, but the space is bigger, it's about something else. I don't know what, but certainly it's a combination of the what and the how and the why. The why. There is a purpose there, or seems to be a purpose. And this purpose is to be more important than profit for some of these companies. Then there will be a kind of acid test, which is that the story spreads. People remember these things versus the ones who you don't remember uh, because they are just part of the plot, the everybody else. And also, a note of warning, which I'll keep repeating today, that the business model may not be transferable. So you can have this very remarkable organization and the idea of saying, oh, I want to be like that. I'm going to copy the whole thing there. Well, you try, you want, but it's not about copying because it may not be possible to copy uh, a, a company or even not even desirable. But the ideas are transferable and they are there to point to us, mm, what if we did something similar? Sounds crazy, but what if there was something there that I could really take and transfer, not to copy the whole thing, but to do something? So this is my working definition of a remarkable organization, which is a working definition and no more than that. One of the biggest things I'm going to take away from tonight is the, uh, this idea of rebooting. The idea of, uh, particularly with some of my client organizations that I'm working with, the idea of rebooting that if things aren't working, if things are, if we haven't got the answers to everything, it's actually okay, and let's go for a reboot and try something different. Number four is what I call having a reboot feature, meaning by design, um, a scheduled reinvention is about from time to time having the ability to push the bottom and say, reboot, enough is enough, and start again and see what happens. And that's something that uh, it's easy to do. Sometimes I've done with some of the clients, particularly in the sell by date structures. For example, teams. I advise to most of my clients when I can to say every single new team that you create, and by the way, please do not many because we don't need more teams really, but if you insist on having another team, it's going to have a sell by date date, meaning this team, even if it's the greatest team on earth, will disband at midnight of July 24th, no matter what. And things look very different with that because, you know, even you know, the following week you can reinvent the week if you want. You can start again, but it's a sense of rebooting, sense of reinventing something and giving a sense of this is not forever because it's very easy to continue having structures that then don't produce anything certainly remarkable. So it's about that. Yeah, I really like the idea of the beta testing, um, keeping your company in, in beta. I think um, so many of the, the new style of organisations that we talk about as being the uh, perhaps the new way of doing things really talk about being in beta all the time and obviously the 
big example of that's Google, but there are lots of other technology companies that talk about that. And I really like the idea of trans translating that into a different type of industry and actually using those uh, those ideas and, and, and keeping your business constantly changing because of it. Another obsession of the modern organization, the traditional one, the not very remarkable, is to have absolutely everything cooked. So everything is done, all the structures, all the accountabilities, people spend a lot of time and money fixing processes and systems and trying to have an answer for absolutely any eventuality in the company. When you know very well that once these PowerPoints have been raised, people forget the whole thing the following day and nobody follow anything because it's impossible to cater for absolutely everything. Staying in beta means being unfinished by design. So you decide not to finish, you decide not to have all the answers. You decide to continue building, but always if something looks very finished, very concrete, we've done, this is the amalgamation between A and B, it's something probably not very good because it's going to be terribly rigid. So it's about the journey, it's about sometimes fixing accountabilities and then uh, putting up with some ambiguity. Something that large organizations don't do very well. Staying in beta is, beta is healthy. It's a way to say, you know, we are all the time in beta. I love my company to stay in beta. If any time we get to alpha, I think we will be dead. <laughs>